But um, if you're looking at each other right in your faces, that's where you can have a good conversation. I think that's what it. That's what it. I think somebody can clarify that, but uh, never mind my poor translation. Yeah, but from the face, then good news. Yeah, I think so. Now, <clears throat> one of the rules that uh, has been agreed upon is that um, I shouldn't speak for a long time. I think the 10 minutes, 15 minutes was meant for me because I normally take a long time. So I promise to be very brief so that we can have discussions uh, and have conversations. So I take this uh, to be my brief remarks, which are not necessarily a speech, uh, but just points of our conversations. And let me also just say to the panelists, I think I'm quite confident they will help us to traverse this very complex space. So my very first point is that the subject that we are going to discuss and debate this afternoon is certainly a complex subject. And you'll hear with the support of the panelists here that we're dealing with a fairly complex matter, but I think we will go somewhere with the discussions. I am uh, the chair of the Portfolio Committee on Infrastructure Development within your midst. So she does oversight on the department. So I must observe all protocols and good afternoon, Honorable Chair. Firstly, my point is that um, I'm going to share with you the work that we do in the Department of Infrastructure Development to drive the great green initiatives of the department or a concept that I'd like to share with you this afternoon, which <clears throat> I call the green infrastructure for the Houghton province to drive the green economy. And through that concept, I'd like to make the point that um, through this concept of green infrastructure to drive the green economy, I think we can take our rightful place as a country, as a province, we can take our place in the global and world economy because I hold a view that the green economy and in this specific case of what we do as a department delivering green infrastructure and that includes maintenance of infrastructure that we can be able to take our economy out of the current situation in which it is and that many of you will know our South African economy is currently experiencing low level of growth, unemployment is very high, poverty amongst our people, inequalities. And I believe that um, if we were to agree on the concept of the green economy and of course at the core of that green infrastructure and to were to find each other conceptually on what exactly are we talking about, we can actually come to consensus that the green economy, green infrastructure, is actually the new wave of the world economy where the world economy can grow, particularly after the crisis of 2007 and 8. So my thesis this afternoon is we've got an opportunity to look at the green economy in a much more broader and strategic context because I think that provides an opportunity for industrialization, for job creation, for fighting poverty and for addressing inequalities. Now, the other thing that I'd like to say is that um, through this green infrastructure um, program, we also have got an opportunity to drive innovation and to generate new ideas to grow our economy. Now, I know that uh, many people, and of course, there are two schools of thought once we start to talk about the green economy, green infrastructure. Most people think through this concept as merely responding to the international agreements that have been signed to reduce global warming. People tend to look at this concept in a very narrow way, an elitist concept, a nice to have, but I want to argue today that in actual fact, this entire conference here, if there's something that we should be looking at, all of us, 
is how to create opportunities for turning around the South African economy. And I believe that green infrastructure and the green economy, beyond compliance with such international agreements and protocols, provide immense opportunities for us to reorient and reposition the South African economy. Now, I'm saying you must take keen interest in this concept quite a way, of course, that in South Africa at this moment, the concept of green infrastructure, green economy, uh, water, I mean, waste recycling, uh, reducing gas emissions, uh, sustainability of the environment, balanced economic development, but essentially the green economy. That concept has not yet found proper traction in our country and in our province. And I think this conversation here, for me, should turn around the conversations to make sure that this concept of the green economy and green infrastructure can find traction in the work that we will be doing. Now, the other point I'd like to raise, uh, moderator, ladies and gentlemen, is the fact that most of you might be aware that internationally, many countries, and the list is too long, but those who are aware of what Germany is doing, Singapore, it was mentioned in the plenary. Those are amongst the countries, and as I said, the list is even China, are currently looking at innovations to use the renewable economy to turn around the growth of their economies. And I think as South Africans, we have got to do exactly that. And my point is that in South Africa, we have inherited an economy from the past. And that economy was based on, to sum up, massive destruction of the environment. Anyone who doesn't believe me, look at the West Rand, sinkholes, many uh, um, evidence that point out to destruction of the environment. If you look at the city of Jobek, Ikuruleni, so how the province bears great significance to provide evidence about what destruction of the environment could be and its implications to the people because our economy was based on extraction of traditional resources or fossil re uh, resources that get burned uh, like coal. So now what we need is to look at whether that is sustainable to turn around the new economy that has got massive demands of a democratic dispensation and the needs of the people to meet. So the point I'm making here, Program Director, is we have got to think quite creatively about how to transit out of an economy that's based on burning or processing of fossil fuels and try to look at how to use renewable energy to turn around the fortunes of our economy. The reason why I'm saying this is, I think we will agree and I hope we can find each other on this point. South Africa has a very powerful competitive uh, edge in the sense that we are a country bestowed with massive natural renewable resources like the wind, like the sun, and I think we've got opportunities to build, model our economy uh, around those areas. However, I must say that um, the challenge that we have here, of course, is to find a serious, serious reorientation amongst key players and key stakeholders to see renewable energy as a very massive opportunity to grow our economy. Those who have been following the South African media in the last few months will know that there have been stakeholders that have raised issues about shifting from fossil fuel resources to renewable energy, and I think we need to the conversations. Now, let me also say to you uh, that the world has completely moved and it has been for some time. Normally in our country program director, when things happen globally, we tend to take time to, to benchmark, look for best practice, and of course, to follow best practices internationally. Now, the world is quite far, and most of you will know, since the United Nations um, uh, Convention on Climate Change of 1992, and of course, a series of protocols that have been signed, Kyoto, now the Paris Agreement. Um, so, Many countries are starting to engage in research and innovation to look at opportunities for economic growth. Now, let me also say that um, there are many things that I think the colleagues sitting around here could explore. 
that when we talk about uh, renewable energy, green economy, there are many opportunities, including recycling, uh, the use of um, renewables, wind, soda, for lighting, for supply of electricity. Um, so there are many things that we can look into, the water supply um, issues, uh, use of water, and I think in the plenary it has been demonstrated that we face massive, massive challenge, not only in the supply of electricity, but I think also in the use of water resources. And we're also starting to see problems that are starting to affect people because of changes in climatic conditions. So if there are any doubts in Thomas is here about what negative impact changes in the climate can do, just look recently at what happened in Cape Town with the drought, the fires that happened there. We are starting to see extreme heat, and right here in our province, you will know we experience some fires in the buildings because when it's cold, people try to use heaters and all sorts of things that are, some of them are not even compliant to try to cope with extreme weather conditions. While going into summer, it's going to be very difficult, um, the issues of drought, uh, floods, and there are many social problems that are coming to come, that are starting to affect the people and to pose a threat to human species and, of course, all other species. I'm raising this issue to say, Chair, there are massive, massive opportunities for innovation, for creativity, for new ideas to make sure that our buildings, our infrastructure adapt to drastic change in climate conditions, to make sure that new buildings that we build are alive to the standards relating to um, changes in climatic conditions, but also we've got massive opportunities in maintenance of infrastructure. So I want to pose a challenge as I conclude to many people that are sitting here, to the business community, to government, to all stakeholders, that I think we've got to find each other and to assess whether the current economic model of South Africa, based on extraction of uh, non-renewable resources, burning fossil fuels, uh, uh, traditional resources to drive economic development, whether that is sustainable in the long term and whether we should not be changing and having serious discussions about changing the economy based on the green economy. And that's what I think we've got to look at more than just the few things that we're doing as a department. But we need a strategic approach to the issues of the green economy, and I'm quite sure that the panel here will help us. Now, one of the two, three things who are doing the department, those who might have uh, visited our um, um, <clears throat> our site and exhibition will have, will have seen that already we have got initiatives that we are displaying there that we are doing in the department. So as the Department of Infrastructure Development and the provincial government, we are already taking the lead in demonstrating that the green economy, green infrastructure is the way to go. Already, we will be using our buildings. We have got massive, massive number of buildings, schools, clinics, uh, and so on and so on, and government offices in the inner city. We are going to be putting panels, mounting panels on top of those to generate electricity. And I know, for example, in a country like Germany, there are solar farms where citizens and residents are able to generate electricity and send it to government. Here, we buy electricity from ESCO, but in other countries there are options where people can generate income and live very well by sending electricity to government and making sure that they supply electricity to the grid. So the model of ESCO and people's dependency on ESCO is what we have got to look at. We are reaffirming renewable energies as the way forward, as the future, as the economy of the future. And I'd like you to join us in taking a look at how are we going to do this. And there are massive, massive uh, economic spin-offs and multiplier effects into the economy through the program that we're doing. Uh, yes, uh, we are using gas to make sure that our big facilities can be able to function less through dependence on the green, water recycling, waste recycling in general, um, and of course, other saving initiatives, LED lights. And let me just wrap up this by saying, we're also looking at local production and industrialization, particularly using, starting with solar panels. I know that the history of solar in our country has not been a good one. Solar is not so much trusted, 
but we are looking at the quality of the panels to make sure that when we introduce rollout of solar panels in our province, the employees and everybody that the people that will benefit from this can see optimal performance of renewable and solar energy uh, in our province. I know that the history has not been good, but we are looking to establishing a production plant of solar panels in our province because most of these things that go into construction, into infrastructure, into the engineering site in our province must be produced and can be produced locally. Currently, Program Director, we are an exporting country and importing country. We export natural resources, we tend to import, import inputs into the infrastructure and those we can use to industrialize, to create jobs, to grow the economy. So we are going to be looking at green products, green solutions as the basis on which to build an alternative manufacturing sector to create jobs because the current economic model we have has raised its ceiling, is not going to do anything meaningful. For 20 years, we couldn't change significantly unemployment rates and the rates that it is going. So we have got a belief, a program director, that shifting to green technology and green economy has got a massive opportunity to turn around the South African economy. So let me challenge some of you sitting here. You've got to take a back seat and think quite carefully. With the direction that the world is taking, the business in which you are, is it sustainable? Does it, is it sensitive to protecting the environment? Is it sensitive to emissions of greenhouses? Is it sensitive to a sustainable future? Because if not, you might find that actually you are in a business that might soon be coming to the end of its lifespan because the world of technologies are changing. We are going to work with universities, even colleges, to establish partnerships because those are the sources of new ideas, they are the sources of uh, new technologies, they are the sources of innovation. We've already created a round table with them and we will be going to work with them to make sure students and universities can provide us with innovative solutions to drive the green agenda. We will also be working with SMEs. There are many small, medium-sized enterprises which have got solutions, innovation, nobody's talking to them. Together with universities, with students, ourselves, we will enter into conversation looking for new solutions to enhance green technology, green infrastructure, we are going to be looking at our EPWP workers. Many of our EPWP workers don't have skills. Currently, we take them, they go into programs. We don't have a sustainable program to train them to make sure that they can survive in the next 20 to 30 years. So we are going to be reorienting the EPWP program to train them on green spaces, planting trees, taking care of green spaces, the landscape of our buildings, um, so there are many ways there, management, and all those opportunities that can create a big opportunity for our EPWP workers. So green spaces, green economy, green technology, green infrastructure give us massive opportunities, including for our artisans. We have got many young people that are in the Tibet colleges. They don't know where to go because the current opportunities in the economy are not opening up for jobs. Our economy is growing in the financial sector. That does not create jobs. So we're going to be looking at government buildings, government infrastructure. And I know that um, the South African Green, the Council of uh, responsible for checking standards on green buildings, I think they're here with us. We will be partnering with them to check. Actually, we have started on a program to check how compliant are government buildings in Houghton. And that is going to be yet another uh, opportunity to grow the economy. There's a lot to say, but the subject is complex. Let's unearth it, let's take it out, and let's place it, let's place it before our people. I can assure you there are massive opportunities to grow the economy and to move out of the current traditional economy that is based on no respect to the environment, no sensitivities towards global warming, and massive destruction and actually it is unable to meet the needs of a democratic dispensation. Apologies that I took time. I guess I still have um, one second to come back, but sorry if I took your time to say apologies. This is a difficult subject. You can also see with Trump going this way, that way. It's not an easy subject. But thank you very much.